Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Celeste and today I'm going to show you how to knit this beautiful Irish moss knit stitch scarf. Um, trying to get it into the into view for you so you can see it in all of its glory. Um, but this is a very simple pattern. The idea um, for this scarf is really for my beginner knitters. All you need to know how to do to create this scarf is to knit and purl. And so I wanted to create a simple design um, that would allow you to utilize and practice those skills. So if you haven't mastered those skills already, if, if you're not sure how to knit and purl, you could go ahead and um, jump back and watch my previous two beginner knit videos where I will teach you how to knit and purl. And once you are comfortable with that, you're ready to move on to something like this. So just the magic of knitting, <laughs> it, just by changing the way that you combine your knit stitches and your purl stitches, you can create a totally different look and a totally different pattern, such as this Irish moss knit stitch here. So um, although this, this pattern and design is really geared towards helping um, beginners kind of progress in their knitting um, and, you know, practice those skills, even, you know, an experienced, be or experienced beginner like an experienced knitter can definitely um, follow along and create one of these beautiful scarves as well. So um, <clears throat> this scarf in this tutorial is made using medium worsted weight yarn and size five millimeter straight knitting needles. Um, you can go ahead though and change it up. Use whatever you have. You can use really any yarn, any weight, um, any size needle. It doesn't really matter. The only thing that you really need to be mindful of is um, making sure that you are casting on in multiples of two. So so, as, so long as your number of cast on stitches is divisible by two, then you are good to go. You shouldn't have any problems in creating this scarf. Um, so this scarf, its finished length is about 56 to 57 inches. I like my scarves uh, on the longer side because I like to be able to um, wrap them and tie them and play with them. Um, but you can feel free to to knit it to as long or as short as you'd like. You can really stop it at any point. Um, and this in this particular pattern, the scarf is going to end up measuring about six inches in width as well. And um, one thing that I really wanna stress in this video, especially because it is geared towards my beginners, is um, how to create this nice and even edge edging. That is something that I wish that I had known when I was first um, beginning to knit. It just would have saved me a lot of heartache, I think. Um, I just, I, I really prefer having a nice straight neat edge. Um, I think it looks, you know, just a lot cleaner and more professional and um, so I'm going to make sure that I, I stress that to you guys in this video so if you are new to um, the concept of a selvage edge or edging um, I'm going to cover that in this video as well and the last thing that um, I wanted to mention about this scarf is that the uh, Irish moss stitch is reversible so it looks the same on the front as it does on the back which is perfect when you're knitting a scarf because it doesn't matter how you want to wrap it, um, how it lays, no matter what, it's going to look great. It's going to look the same on both sides. So you don't really have to worry about having a wrong side and a right side, which is always nice. So all that being said, I hope that you guys enjoy this video. I hope that it helps you. Um, if it does, please feel free to like, leave a comment, subscribe, do all those good things that will really go a long way in helping me to grow my channel. Um, I want to thank you for taking the time to be here. I hope that this video helps you. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, you guys, we are ready to go. I've already gone ahead and cast on my 30 stitches using my medium worsted weight yarn. If you need um, a refresher, you can feel free to go back and watch my how to knit beginner video where I will show you how to ca cast on. So you just wanna make sure that the number of stitches you've cast on are um, multiples of two. So as long as your stitches are divisible by two, then you are good to go. So the first and the last stitch are 
the most important stitches in creating our salvage edges, our salvage edges. So what you want to do is always slip your first stitch in your row knit wise. So insert as if to knit, but then slip it off of your right hand needle onto your right hand needle, I should say. So we didn't actually knit it, we just slipped it off onto our right hand needle. And now we can continue with our pattern, the knit one, purl one, pattern repeat. So we are just going to repeat the knit one, bring your working yarn to the front in order to purl one. Bring your working yarn to the back. Next, we will knit one. Bring your working yarn back to the front. Purl one. So when you see these little asterisks up at the top, you can see my K1 purl one are within asterisks asterisks that means that you are going to repeat the instructions within those asterisks until you reach the end or until your pattern tells you um, to do otherwise so we are going to just be knitting and purling all the way across until we only have one stitch remaining on our left hand needle once we get to the last stitch we are always going to purl the last stitch and so by slipping the first stitch knitwise and purling the last stitch those are our selvage stitches those are basically our edge stitches and um, this is just one technique that you can use in order to create those nice straight even edges so here we go we're just continuing along row one is simply knitting one and purling one all the way across with the exception of your first and last stitch. Okay, we are coming now towards the end. We are finishing up our knit one, purl one, repeat. So purl one. Knit one. Purl one. And once we've purled this stitch, we will now have one stitch remaining on our left hand needle. And you are going to go ahead and always purl the last stitch in your row. So we're going to purl this last stitch right here. And then we are ready to start row two. And row two is actually the exact same as row one. So we are going to turn our work and begin by slipping that first stitch knitwise. So you're going to insert 
the tip of your right hand needle into the stitch as if to knit, but sl slide it off onto your right hand needle without knitting it. That's how you slip. So we've slipped our first stitch and now we can continue the pattern repeat within the asterisks. We're going to knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. And again, you are going to just continue and repeating your knit one, purl one until you make it all the way to the end of the row and you only have one stitch remaining. Okay, again, we are coming down towards the end of the row. We're going to knit one, purl one, and we have our one remaining stitch, our edge stitch that we will be purling. All right, there you go. So you've just completed row two. You can already start to see a little bit of our Irish moss stitch knitting up and so now we are going to go ahead and turn our work and begin row three. So like I said at the beginning of every row we are going to slip the first stitch knitwise. So insert your needle as if to knit but slip it onto your right hand needle instead. And now we are just going to simply be purling one and knitting one all the way across until we get to the last stitch. So instead of a knit one, purl one row, now we are going to be purling one and knitting one. So this is a purl stitch and we are going to be now knitting that purl stitch. This is a, we're going to be purling the knit stitch and knitting the purl stitches all the way across. So purl. Knits. Knits.
Okay, so we've made it to our very last stitch, and hopefully by now you know the drill. We are going to be purling this last stitch. And now we are going to turn our work. And we are ready to begin row four. And row four is the exact same as row three. So here you can kind of see, you're starting to see the little clusters of our moss, our Irish moss stitch really taking shape now. So that's really exciting. So insert your right hand needle as if to knit, but slip that first stitch knit wise instead. And now we are going to continue row, row four by purling one and knitting one all the way across. And you can see our previous row was a purl one, knit one row. So now as we are working our way across, we are purling the purl stitches. So that was a purl, so we are purling and we are knitting the knit stitches. And that's it. Purl one, knit one, all the way until you reach the last stitch. And once you reach your last stitch, you are going to purl. Okay, so I told you I was going to stress this for you, but here we go. We are on our last stitch, and we are making sure to purl to keep with um, our nice straight selvage edges. And now you can really start to see it's shaping up, and this is it. This is the entire pattern. So now you are going to go back to and start all over again. You're going to repeat rows one through four, over and over and over and over and over until your scarf is the length that you desire. So like I said earlier, you can change it up. Feel free to make it as short or as long as you want. I would just recommend ending on row two or four just to kind of make it uniform. So yeah, I'll see you when you're, when you're there. Okay. So here is my scarf. So uh, like I said, you just repeat rows one through four until your scarf is as long as you would like it to be. So in this video, my scarf is about 56 and 57 inches in length. And I'm really sorry about how washed out um, my scarf looks right now. My lighting was terrible. Um, I was using natural lighting and so I've got a lot of fluctuation but hopefully you can still see what I'm doing and it gets the job done. Um, 
So the very next thing we are going to do is once, you, once you're done, we are ready to bind off. So we do this by knitting the first stitch and then knitting the second stitch. And then you are going to take the first stitch on your right hand needle and slip it over and off of the, of the stitch that's next to it. So now we're going to knit the next stitch. And now we have two stitches on our right hand needle and we're going to take that first stitch and slip it over and off, just like so. And this is how you do a, a knitted bind off. We're gonna go ahead and knit the next stitch. Take that first stitch, slip it over and drop it off. And that's, that's it, that's the bind off. So knit the next stitch. Bring it, oops, over and drop it off. Knit the next stitch. Bring that first stitch over, drop it off. And you are just going to continue binding off your stitches until you reach the very last stitch. As you're working the bind off, you will begin to see this edging at the top. You can see that that is where your work is being bound off. And so that means that you are you're doing a good job. <laughs> Don't let it scare you. If this is your first time binding off, um, it might look a little bit odd, but trust me, your work is supposed to be falling off of your needles. That's a good thing. It means you are doing it correctly. Um, so just, yep, keep on going and work that bind off all the way to the end. Okay, and now we are going to go ahead and bind off this last stitch. We knit just as we have before, and then slip that first stitch over and off. And 
now you will have just that one stitch remaining and I like to kind of pull that stitch upwards a little bit and give it a little bit of a slack and now we are going to cut a tail you want to leave a good amount maybe about six inches so that you can weave in those ends and then you just pull that stitch all the way through pull that tail up all the way through and that's it you have officially bound off your scarf look at those edges again i'm really sorry about the lighting hopefully it's not too distracting for you um and so now you are going to want to thread your tail through a tapestry needle so that we can weave in the ends and i'm going to show you how to do that so here's your edging this is your bind off edge and you can see it they kind of create these these little v stitches you kind of see that v stitch pattern so in order to weave in what i like to do is go from start on on one starting on one side here's the center i'm going to try to show you and here's the top of the stitch so I like to insert from above the top, so the top stitch from the outside up through the center and pull my tail through. And then again, I move to the next stitch and I go from below up through the center. And I pull the tail all the way through. Again, I go from below through the center and I'm kind of just winding my way down so I'm starting that top stitch I'm going from below up through the center and you can do this as many times as you want kind of depending on the length of your tail I don't know. I like I it varies, but you know, I usually like to do like, I don't know, 6 to 8 stitches. And that might be a little um overkill, but that's how I like to do it. You want to just wind your way up. And there's no need to go all the way across. Um you just want to go a little bit of a ways. Oops. So you're going one side. <clears throat> I like to give it a little stretch to kind of um, even out the the thread. And I'm still I'm still going. <laughs> and like I said, you don't have to go to a certain certain length or anything. Um, no need to go all the way across. Yeah, you definitely don't have to do this many stitches. I was just, I guess, just feeling it that day. Um, and so now I'm going to go back the opposite direction. So what I'm going to do is... This time, I'm instead of going from the outside in, let me turn my work. So we're gonna go back the opposite direction. Instead of going from the outside in, we're going to be going from the through the inside out. So we're going through the center of the stitch first and out the other side, like so. So moving to the next stitch, we're going to go in through the center of that stitch first and out through the other side. Going through the center of the stitch and out the other side and that's it there's many different ways to weave in your ends this is just one that I prefer so go through the center and out the other side and you can do this you know just a couple a few several times 
just so long as your tail is nice and secure. And once you get to a, a good stopping point, you just want to cut your tail and that's it. Hey guys, I forgot to mention earlier that um, I'm going to be filming a separate video where I show you how to create and attach a fringe. Fringe is Fringes are the little tassels that you see usually dangling off of the ends of a scarf. I have not attached to them yet. I'm waiting to film that video. So um, if you do like a good friend, friend, if you do like a good friend, fringe? If you do like a good fringe, I'm going to be filming a separate video for you. Um, that way, I thought about putting it in at the end of this video, but not everybody is going to want to do a fringe and not everybody is going to necessarily want to sit through that. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that in a separate video. So just be on the lookout if you do want to add a fringe to your scarf. Um, be on the lookout. I will have a separate video for that. Great. So thank you guys. I hope you enjoy this video and I will see you soon.